Hello everyone, I'm Paula Bartholomew, and as Director of Online Events, it's certainly my pleasure to welcome you to Hawthorne University's Holistic Health and Nutrition Webinar Series. I'll be the moderator for this webinar. I'm here with James Bernardinelli, who's engineering this presentation, and with Judy Scott, who's our presenter. So thank you for joining us. Um, so the presentation tonight is on using individual amino acids to overcome anxiety, panic, worry, negativity, cravings, and emotional eating. Um, we sure want to overcome these issues, so I'm glad you're here, Trudy, to, to, to tell us how to do it. Uh, let me give you a little bit of an um, overview of what's going to be presented here. Trudy uses supplementing um, with specific uh, and individual amino acids. And she uses them because they can raise neurotransmitter levels and help balance brain chemistry. Balancing brain chemistry can help alleviate these feelings of anxiety and fear and worry and panic attack and feelings of stress and overwhelm. Now we all can feel these from time to time, but when they go on for prolonged periods of time they can really lead to a state of imbalance. So. Um, Trudy's going to talk about how they can be supportive in addressing other issues that contribute to or exacerbate anxiety, such as sugar cravings as well as emotional eating and various addictions. In addition, um, supplementing amino acids can help with depression and PMS, poor focus, um, attention deficit disorder, insomnia. These things often co-occur with, with anxiety. So this presentation is going to cover um, the symptoms of low serotonin, low GABA, low endorphins, and the low catecholamine neurotransmitters, and then how to raise these neurotransmitters with specific amino acids, um, in particular the tryptophan and GABA and phenylalanine and tyrosine is going to help improve mood and help end emotional eating. Um, Trudy is also going to talk about glutamine and stabilizing low blood sugar. This will help lead to improved mood and gut health. And Trudy has a great quote. She says, the amino acids are key to the success of my practice. They help my clients eliminate stress eating, and they make food changes without feeling deprived and only having to use willpower. So my clients feel calm and happy right away. It gives them hope while their other health and nutritional challenges are addressed. Many people suffering from various health concerns could receive tremendous relief with proper use of amino acids, and that is a good thing. Amino acids instead of drugs. It's good, Trudy. It is. <laughs> so Trudy Scott, she is a certified nutrition and nutritionist, and she is really on a mission, and it's big time to educate and empower her clients about the healing powers of food in order to find natural solutions for their emotional distresses and sugar cravings. Trudy works with her clients one-on-one, -on -one. she does groups, and she really works as a catalyst to bring about life-enhancing mood transformations. And this starts with eating real whole food and using some pretty amazing nutrients that Trudy's going to talk about in the presentation tonight. She combines this all together um, in her work using a, a nine-step approach with her clients to help them overcome their issues. And it's always customized to their unique needs and biochemistry. Trudy's written a great book, um, The Anti-Anxiety Food Solution. Trudy, I think I've handed out a few dozen of these already. Oh, I thank I you. Get a case of them. Um, everybody that's gotten it has said that, you know, can they get another copy? They're passing it around. They're handing it. People are learning so much. They're trying things. They're, they're um, really finding some, some good support. So um, thank you for writing the book and uh, for the help that it is providing many, Trudy. Well, thank you. Certainly. Um, Trudy has, has had the opportunity to present to many health practitioners on food and mood and talking about the research. And um, she's been on NPR and many national television shows and quoted in a lot of magazines and um, has a great um, e-newsletter. It's uh, Food, Mood, and Gal Stuff. And you'll see um, the slides when Trudy has up her websites. You will be able to go there to uh, get more information from Trudy and to get her newsletter and more information about the work that she's doing. So it's my pleasure to have introduced Trudy and have you presenting this webinar. 
Welcome, Trudy. We're so happy to have you with us. And I know you have a lot to cover here, so I want to give you the mic and let you take over. Great. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. It's, I'm really excited to be sharing this because, as, as you said with that quote, it's central to the success that I have in my practice and that the success that my clients see so that they can start to feel good right away. And that's what we want. We want people to feel motivated. We want them to feel optimistic. We want them to feel encouraged because often making all the food changes that they need to make to feel well feels overwhelming and it feels like they're going to have to be deprived and they're going to you know, feel worse before they feel better. So the amino acids are just so powerful for making people feel good right away, which is why I absolutely love them. And I, I like to, my title is Targeted Individual Amino Acids because they are targeted to each person's unique needs. And we're going to go through some of the, the questionnaires that I use. So we will figure out what a person needs based on, on, on their own biochemistry, but then also individual amino acids because I like to do them individually so we can uh, increase if we need to or decrease if we need to or take something out or add something in if we need to. There are some wonderful combination products available that have various different combinations, but I like to do the individual ones because that way we can keep track of, of what someone actually needs. So I'm going to cover... The, the five different areas that I look at, and you'll see how they help with all these mood issues, anxiety, panic, worry, negativity, and then also the related sugar cravings, emotional eating, and carb addiction, or other addictions, any kind of addiction. I tend to work more with the, the food addictions, but someone who has a drug addiction, or whether it be a street drug, or a prescription drug, or some kind of behavioral addiction, these amino acids can help with those as well as alcohol, of course. So we really, really amazing. So what we'll do is I'm going to just briefly go into my story again in case people don't know me. And then I'm also going to share a little bit about my amino acid story because I have had success with aminos in the past and that's how I got very excited about, about them was actually trying them. So for someone who hasn't tried them, um, and wants to start using them, it would be, I, I encourage uh, anyone who's want, wanting to learn about them is to do the questionnaires, see if you need them, and possibly try them. Now, of course, if you don't need them, they're not going to work, and they could actually make you feel worse. So that's a great thing about the aminos, is if they are going to work, you will get results right away, and you're going to know if you should be taking them. But experiencing it yourself is a great way to really understand them and then be able to talk to your clients about you know how they're working and how they're feeling. I also want to just cover where the amino acids fit into the holistic health program because food obviously is first but I will have my clients start doing the amino acids at the same time that we're making those food changes. Then I'm going to go into an overview of using the targeted individual amino acids, when to use them, when to take them, things to be aware of. And then we're going to go into the five different areas that, that I focus on. Low serotonin, which uh, I'll use tryptophan or 5-HTP, and I'll tell you why I use one versus the other and some things to look out for when it comes to 5-HTP, for example. We'll talk about low GABA gamma amino butyric acid, which is both a neurotransmitter and an amino acid. And the amino acid, obviously, for raising the low GABA is GABA. The low catecholamines, and the amino acid is tyrosine. Uh, low endorphins, and the amino acid is DPA, or D-phenylalanine. And then, of course, low blood sugar, obviously, food changes are really important with this one, but then also glutamine and how important that is. And then I've got some case studies sprinkled throughout the presentation that we will talk about. So my story, very quickly, I was working in corporate America, working really, really long hours and got really stressed out. I was eating a diet that did not suit uh, my constitution. I was actually eating a lot of soy. I wasn't eating animal protein and started to get increasingly anxious. Uh, very bad social anxiety, actually had three panic attacks. And all of this was very uncharacteristic of me because I was a rock climber. I'd actually met my husband uh, rock climbing and we'd been to uh, Kilimanjaro for a honeymoon. This is actually a picture of me rock climbing in Utah. 
and very adventurous, outdoorsy kind of person. So being anxious was not normal for me. And certainly having panic attacks and having these fears of, of nothing and everything, I was just fearful of everything, didn't, didn't really fit with, with how, you know, how I should be feeling. I had no trauma. I had nothing that I should be afraid of. And I knew intuitively that it was, there was something biochemical going on with me. And it took me a number of years to find all the answers. But one thing that really did help me was GABA. And I used GABA Calm, which is an amino acid. This is actually a blend. I've talked about not using the blends. But the GABA Calm is so fantastic because it's, it's sublingual and it's a very small amount. And we'll go into that in more detail when we talk about GABA. But GABA Calm was my last ever. I say I'm a GABA girl. <laughs> I just The GABA really gave me relief and gave me hope while I was looking for all the other issues, which was pyroluria and gluten intolerance and not getting enough animal protein and blood sugar issues and digestive problems, a whole host of things. You know, the reason why we get into to doing what we do. Long story short, I went back to school to become a nutritionist, and now I want to share this powerful, powerful information. So GABA Calm was fantastic. I actually tried theanine first. When I first had my panic attack, I remember being absolutely wiped out after my first panic attack and my poor husband not knowing what on earth was going on and I just passed out and he spent the whole night on the computer trying to look for, for answers and he found theanine, I tried that and it didn't really help and it's something that could be used for some people but I find the GABA to be more effective. Uh, throughout the years I have needed a tryptophan on occasion. I certainly am prone to the winter blues so when it's very grey, I do notice that. And then if I'm not exercising enough, I definitely need endorphin support. And we'll talk about BPA and, and, and how that raises endorphins. And then glutamine definitely has helped me when my adrenals have been burned out and I've needed additional support to help keep my blood sugar levels stable. I have not used tyrosine. I've tried to use tyrosine and it's it doesn't work for me. It's obviously something that I don't need and it, it doesn't do anything for me. So trying them out is a good way to gauge, um, get a bit better understanding of what's going on. So I was fortunate. I needed uh, four out of the five, which gave me some you know, good things to relate to. So let's just go through a little bit about my background in case uh, you don't know where I came from. I actually had the wonderful opportunity to work in Julia Ross's clinic. I consider her an amazing mentor. She is uh, calls herself a nutritional psychologist, and she's the author of The Mood Cure. I'm sure um, uh, most people listening to this are familiar with The Mood Cure and The Diet Cure. And her clinic focused on uh, mood disorders, eating disorders, and addictions. And I worked there for two years, and I learned an amazing amount of information about you know, amino acids, pyroluria, uh, digestion, you name it. Um, but the, her strength is obviously the amino acids, and she's been using the amino acids in her clinic for over 25 years with, with great results. I had always had a special interest in, in mental health. Uh, my, my college degree was actually in psychology and geography and had always been interested in it and then di uh, diverted off into the computer world and now I've come back to the mental health world. I've got you know, family members with mood problems. I'm obviously prone to mood problems unless I look after myself. I um, would obviously have you know, a lot of problems if I wasn't looking after myself. I've got addictions in the family and of course we have these moods and addictions that often go hand in hand. And the amino, the amino acids are just amazing. They uh, transformed uh, you know, my practice, made my practice much more successful but also the, it transforms the lives of my clients. So I'm just a huge fan of them. And obviously food is first. Um, supplements is obviously going to help. A lot, of, a lot of my clients, um, you know, a lot of people will read my book, The Anti-Anxiety Food Solution, which was published in June 2011. And a lot of people can see symptom resolution by just making food changes, just adding in real food, just adding in protein, just adding, uh, making sure they have a good breakfast, stabilizing their blood sugar, um, you know, eating according to what they need. 
uh, getting rid of the caffeine, getting rid of the sugar. So a lot of people can just make those changes and see complete resolution of symptoms. But then there are other people, like me, who needed more support, and that's where the amino acids are so fantastic. The other thing is that the amino acids will remove that craving, it will remove that addiction. So a lot of people can use willpower up to a certain point, but then willpower gets the better of them. And that's when they relapse, or that's when they're finding it hard to get off the gluten or hard to get off the sugar. They feel deprived or they, you know, have got this insatiable craving. So the amino acids just make it so much easier. So food first, obviously, but then the supplements, um, which we're going to talk about today are the amino acids, but there are other supplements that are also part of my practice. So where do they fit into this holistic nutrition program? And the, the, the previous talk that I did, we covered the food, the food part of it. So this is uh, eating real whole food, removing sugar, balancing blood sugar, removing caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, removing gluten and then looking for other food intolerances and optimizing digestion. So as I said, a lot of people can see re resolution by just making those changes. Of the nine-step process that I use with my clients and that I covered in my book, the brain chemistry happens to be step six, but if someone is having problems right off the bat, and certainly when someone comes to work with me, they can't do it on their own. They need that, that support. We'll, I'll have them use the amino acids right at the beginning. So we'll have it you know, right at the beginning when we're helping them get off the sugar, when we're helping them put the caffeine, when I'm helping them get off the gluten. So right up front, uh, the amino acids are part of the, the program. But I wanted them, you know, I list them as six because food is first. Food is the most important thing that we need to focus on. And I don't want uh, my clients to think that they can just get away with taking some supplements and not make a food, changing, food changes. And then, of course, the, the other steps, pyroluria, zinc and vitamin B6, which is amazing for the social anxiety called pyroluria, which I will be covering in a later presentation. Those two uh, nutrients are fantastic for helping to make some of the brain chemicals like GABA and serotonin. So in conjunction with taking the aminos and making the food changes, adding these nutrients in help with the social anxiety and also actually help start to balance hormone levels. And then of course we've got to look at other nutrients like vitamin D, like iron, like B12, and look at whether they are on medications that might be depleting them of various nutrients. Um, and then lifestyle factors. But today we're going to be covering uh, step six, which is the amino acids. So using targeted individual amino acids. Just a little recap, amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and they are individual amino acids that have been shown to specifically elevate mood and reduce and eliminate cravings. And depending on the questionnaire, you will use a certain amino acid under a certain condition. Some people need all of the amino acids, some people just need a few of them. They are targeted based on actual symptoms and also targeted uh, dosage-wise depending on the person's need. And we'll go through some case studies and I'll share with you how we decide how much someone needs. There are some minimum doses, that's a starting dose. Some people need even less than that. Some people may need more than that. The great thing is you will notice an effect within one to ten minutes. And when I tell people this, they feel like it's, how could that happen? Am I just imagining it? Is it a placebo effect? Certainly when they're sitting in my office and they notice that improvement within usually usually about five minutes. Sometimes it'll take ten minutes for the full effect to, to uh, for them to notice the full effect. But when I tell them that this is going to happen and then they actually feel it, they almost can't believe it because it, it is so amazing that, that you get results right away. Now, of course, they do need to be taken sublingually. So I'll have someone use a sublingual uh, capsule or like the GABA Calm or chew the actual capsule. So the tryptophan, for example, I'll have them chew that or we'll use there's a chewable form of tryptophan as well. And if you do it like that, it gets into the blood vessels in the mouth and then into the brain very quickly, and then you're getting results right away. So someone will feel the effects right away, 
and then you send them home for the next week with how much they should take and then they'll monitor how they're feeling over the course of the next week. Within 24 hours, um, most of my clients are feeling huge improvement. So that's very encouraging. And as I said, with the amino acids, if, they are, if you're not getting the results within 24 hours, certainly if you want to hang on and try it for a week and you're still not getting results, it means either that you don't need it or that you're not taking enough. So that's the great thing about the aminos. You're not taking them long term, not knowing if they are actually doing anything. And they really are the best nutrients that I've ever worked with. Clients get hope right away. And it's just so rewarding to see that smile on someone's face and that bemusement, uh, you know, wow, I was feeling negative five minutes ago and I don't have a negative thought in my head. So it's, it's just very encouraging and it's just a wonderful thing to see how amazing they are and how people get results so quickly. The other great thing is client compliance. It's, it's a lot of supplements to take at different times in the day. But because uh, my clients are seeing immediate results so quickly, they are willing to take the, the amino acids at certain times of the day. And if they run out or if they miss a dose, they notice right away. So once they're on it and they're getting the results, they tend to stick on it, stick with it. Now, I do want to say that not everyone responds perfectly. I've had a few clients who do not get any results from any of the amino acids. Some people get results from some of them and not the others. And if someone is not responding to the amino acids, it means there's something else going on and we need to address uh, gut health or we need to uh, look at uh, food intolerances more closely or maybe low vitamin B12 or something else. So not everyone responds perfectly. But I would say at least 70 to 80% of my clients who score in the questionnaires that I'm going to share with you in a second, uh, do respond well to the amino acids. So how do I use it in my practice? There are these questionnaires for each of the low, um, sex, low uh, brain chemical uh, symptoms, low serotonin, low GABA, low catecholamines, low endorphins, and then low blood sugar. And I'll have my clients do these questionnaires, rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10 on all the symptoms, and I'll share these questionnaires with you in a second, and rate themselves, and then we look at the areas that um, have a lot of high symptoms. I will also have them re review the amino acid precautions. Julia Ross has got a great section on the precautions on wh which amino acids you should avoid when. And I'll start them with uh, one to two single amino acids while making the food changes. So the first day that they come in, um, I've had to do a trial of uh, an amino acid while they're in the office, and that will be an amino acid that they will use over the course of the next week. Uh, it's the first appointment, the two-hour appointment, so halfway through that appointment, I will likely have them try a second amino acid. So they'll go home with two amino acids that they're going to try some people just say, I just want to do both of them at the same time. Uh, I just want to feel better. Other people say, I just, uh, you know, if you decide that they're going to do uh, maybe GABA for three or four days so they can ascertain how that's working for them, and then maybe the tryptophan the second half of the week so they can actually figure out what makes a difference. Of course, everyone is keeping a food log while they are doing this so we can gauge uh, what kind of symptoms they're having and how they're doing. Um, I will do in-office trials, and if I'm working with someone over the phone, we'll do a trial of the amino acids um, over the phone, and I'll explain that how we do that when, I, when we talk about the examples and the case studies, and I'm going to walk you through tryptophan, GABA, and DPA. So there are some tips for using the amino acids. You want to only give what's needed. You know, some people think, well, more is better, and that's not the case. If you, can, you know, you want to only give what, someone ne what, what is needed. If someone, if someone is given more, they can actually have uh, the reverse effect. So uh, that's the very last bullet here on the slide. We want to respect the reverse effect of the nutrients. So if they have too much, they can get the same effect as a deficiency. So it's a balancing act. And the first few weeks is a, a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion about how much they need, do they need to increase it, um, starting off, you know, I'll have them start 
one and one, for example, and then they'll see how they do, and then I'll say, if you feel good with you know one twice a day, then try two. If you feel better with two, then try three. Um, if you don't feel any better with three, then go back to two. So they have got a lot of control over what they're trying in, in response to how they're feeling. They are not needed forever. Uh, three to six months is pretty typical. Uh, with kids, sometimes it's just about it's a month. Uh, some people need more in winter time when uh, serotonin takes a dip in the winter, or if they're under a lot of stress, or if they're not eating well, they may need to have a little boost. And there, there's no, uh, you know, uh, the, if someone's ready to stop, we just have them lower uh, their symptom, lower the uh, dose after a month. They can stop cold turkey if they want to. There's no, um, you know, they don't have to lower it slowly or anything like that. Um, just uh, st stop. Um, a lot of people will say, look, you know, I've forgotten to take them. Well, I went away and I didn't take them and I still feel okay. Or, you know, I've been taking these for long enough, let's, let's stop. Or I'm feeling so great, let's stop. So it's really dependent on each person. They should be taken away from protein. So 30 minutes before a meal or 60 minutes after a meal that contains protein. And this is because the, you don't want to compete uh, for absorption with the other amino acids that's in that protein-containing food. Of course, any time there's an adverse reaction, uh, the client is encouraged to stop taking the amino acid. And vitamin C, uh, taken in the form of emergency in a glass of water, actually negates the effect. So if someone uh, takes one of the aminos, doesn't feel good, and some of the symptoms that you could have is maybe feeling a little dizzy or lightheaded, uh, tryptophan can sometimes cause a little bit of nausea, the vitamin C will completely negate the effect. So these are the sections that we are going to cover. Serotonin, GABA, catecholamines, and endorphins. And we're also going to uh, talk about low blood sugar. But uh, with uh, serotonin, if your levels are good, you're going to feel positive and confident and calm, flexible, easygoing. And the big thing with low serotonin is you won't have the afternoon and evening craving. So with each of these categories, you've got the mood component and then you've got the cravings component. And with the low serotonin, it's the afternoon and evening cravings. That's the big clue there. With low GABA, you will have these cravings for sugary foods and often alcohol. So someone will come home and they need some wine to relax. That's a big clue that GABA is an issue. And when you've got good GABA levels, you'll feel relaxed, stress-free, and calm. But you need the sugary foods or the wine to make you feel like that. With the low, uh, with catecholamines, if they are good, you'll feel energized, upbeat, alert. You'll have good focus. You'll good have good motivation. And you won't need something to give you that energy pickup. So you won't need sugar or you won't need caffeine. A big thing with people with low catecholamines is they need that coffee. And when we address low catecholamines, they don't need the coffee anymore. And we need to think about getting rid of the coffee because if they're drinking coffee and it's making them anxious, then we're not going to get anywhere. And then with the endorphins, these are our feel-good brain chemicals, and they will will feel pleasure and euphoria and feeling of comfort, like someone gave us a big hug. And we won't need to comfort eat. We won't feel like we need to eat uh, for a reward or for a treat or because we deserve it. Now, some people can have all of these symptoms. And they can crave for various different reasons. They can crave because they've got low serotonin and they're going to crave in the evening. They may, may crave a, a glass of wine because they've got low GABA. So it can be a little bit challenging to figure out which amino acid is doing which. But if, if they try one amino acid, for example, for the afternoon and evening cravings, they try tryptophan and it doesn't work then they would try the uh, DPA, and if that helps with the comfort eating, then they know they've, they've found the right solution. And a lot of people are using you know, all four of the amino acids and getting results. It's not unusual for someone to be on all four, actually all five. The fifth one is the glutamine. So the fifth area is 
good and, and stable blood sugar. And this, when you've got good and stable blood sugar, you're going to feel stable and grounded. You're not going to feel irritable or agitated or nervous or anxious. Some people with low blood sugar can actually get panic attacks as well. And the big thing with the blood sugar is uh, you won't have these intense cravings for something sweet. And this can sometimes be confused with some of the other low brain chemical symptoms. It's quite hard to figure out. But um, I'm going to share with you a, a really nice tip for using glutamine to stop these intense sweet cravings. So these are the low serotonin symptoms. And what I'll have my clients do is rate themselves on, on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, on all these symptoms. So anxiety, panic attacks phobias, worried or fearful, and with the low serotonin, the anxiety is all in the head. So it's not a physical anxiety, it's the ruminating thoughts, it's the reprocessing, it's the thinking about something that you said, it's uh, creating lists and all of these things that, that go on in the head. So it's more worry in the head. And then of course, the classic low serotonin symptom, the depression and the negativity, uh, winter blues, uh, suicidality. The other thing with winter blues, uh, there is research showing that uh, people with low serotonin that have the winter blues are more prone to anxiety in the winter. I actually just uh, got, I was on the phone with someone, a new possible client, and she says she notices a big increase in her anxiety in the winter time when her uh, winter blues goes up. So it's likely related to the low serotonin. Um, rage and anger issues, very closely related to low serotonin, and I'm going to share a nice case study on how tryptophan helped uh, one of my clients who had really bad uh, anger issues. And then I mentioned the afternoon and evening cravings. And then other symptoms that we will see with low serotonin are PMS, um, irritability, TMJ, fibromyalgia, and other pain symptoms. Insomnia, of course, is a big one with low serotonin. Low self-esteem, self-criticism, this critic on the shoulder, who am I to be doing this, am I good enough, you know, am I, who am I to think that I can, you know, do whatever I'm doing. Often uh, people will, uh, there's, uh, you know, think, feel like they're a fraud. Um, and then the other thing that goes with low serotonin is obsessive tendencies, obsessive thoughts, or obsessive behaviors. And addressing that with uh, low, with tryptophan can, uh, I've seen some really good results with it. And then of course digestive issues because we make so much serotonin in the digestive system. So I'll have someone rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10 on these symptoms and then assuming they score, you know, 7s, 8s, 9s, um, I'll have them try uh, the tryptophan and I'm going to walk you through how we do that in a second. So how do we raise low serotonin? Uh, the two amino acids are tryptophan and 5-HTP, and I always start with tryptophan. I've just had the best results with it. And the other thing is 5-HTP uh, can actually raise cortisol. So if someone has got high cortisol, so they've got sleep problems, it could possibly make it worse. The starting dose for tryptophan is 500 milligrams. And the uh, dosing is mid-afternoon, MA is mid-afternoon, and BT is bedtime. So the starting dose would be one mid-afternoon and one at bedtime, increasing to two or three at each of those times. And then 5-HTP, the starting dose is 50 milligrams. Some people do better on one versus the other. I, I tend to start most people on tryptophan. It is more expensive. Um, and there are some concerns with tryptophan. I even, you know, I've seen some uh, supplement companies not even uh, using tryptophan because of the issues with when it was pulled off the market a number of years ago. But it's been on the market, uh, you know, a long time now, and I have not seen any problems with it. Except the quality. You know, quality is really important, and I only use the Litsky brand. I'm not uh, paid by them to say this, but I have just had seen really good results with LIDTKE, L-I-D-T-K-E, that's the fifth bullet on the slide here. Um, I have had a number of clients run out and buy something from the health store or they already had something when they started uh, working with me and they didn't get the same results. The tryptophan will often help the insomnia. Uh, if it's not enough, then we'll add melatonin. 
and then I only will work with someone with tryptophan or 5-HTP if they're only doing one SSRI. If they're doing more than one SSRI, then we won't even go and use the tryptophan. And if they're wanting to work with their doctor to get off the SSRI, then we may add in the tryptophan later. That does need to be taken six hours away from the SSRI because we've got this possibility of serotonin syndrome. So they usually will be doing their SSRI in the morning. Uh, this is a, you know, like Prozac or Zoloft, that we're doing that in the morning. And then uh, we will, the first dose of the tryptophan will be 3 p.m., which will be six hours or more apart from that, and then in the evening. Uh, vitamin B6, niacinamide, and zinc all help to make serotonin, so those might be part of the picture as well. And then a full spectrum lamp or a SAD lamp uh, is very helpful. I had one little chap that I was working with, a very, very small dose of tryptophan and the full spectrum lamp was enough to get him out of his winter depression. And then of course sunshine and getting out on the snow is helpful as well because of the light. And then exercise um, is great for raising serotonin levels and then of course diet as well, which we haven't talked about in this presentation, but protein, uh, good uh, organic produce, healthy fats, um, or, and you know, obviously devoid of sugar and, and the junk food, very important. There is uh, more research on serotonin and some of the other amino acids. We know that the, from research that low serotonin is related to anxiety disorders. We know that SSRIs are often used for the treatment of anxiety. And there is probably more research on 5-HTP than there is on tryptophan. We know from some research that it increases serotonin, relieves anxiety, eliminates panic attacks, and then agoraphobia, which is fear of outdoor spaces. And then tryptophan uh, has obviously some similar benefits. A great study looking at a functional food rich in pumpkin seeds. Um, high in tryptophan and zinc actually helped with social anxiety and sleep problems. And then some recent research uh, in 2012 in a tryptophan-enriched cereal twice a day improved sleep, anxiety, and depression in 55 to 75 year olds. And it was a very small dose of tryptophan, but it was helping. I wish they had done the study without the cereal, but they happened to include it with the cereal. So there is, um, you know, not a lot of research, uh, but there is some supporting this. And this is a, a client of mine who um, had huge anger uh, issues, explosive rage um, and anger issues. She was actually uh, diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, couldn't sleep, anxiety, depression. She was tired because she wasn't sleeping, loved her candies, her green and yellow and red candies, and was eating a lot of bread. And uh, she turned out to be anemic. Uh, she got on some iron, and I encouraged her mom to have her eat red meat. Uh, we did a gluten-free trial, and that made a big difference when she added back the uh, gluten. That was a really bad, really bad anger outburst. And it was likely the gluten that was causing the low iron and the low serotonin because of the damage to the gut. But we did an in-office trial of the tryptophan uh, of 100 milligrams. It's a 100 milligram chewable tryptophan. And I was talking to her about needing to get off the candies and the bread, and she was not happy to hear this, didn't want to talk to me. And she was in a swivel chair, and she actually turned her back on me and didn't want to talk about it. So I said, well, why don't you just try the tryptophan, and I'll give you this 100 milligram chewable tryptophan, and then we'll talk about the candy afterwards. And she said to me, she was very anxious, and she didn't even want to talk about it. So I said, just try the tryptophan. So she tried the tryptophan, and within five minutes, she turned her, her chair around and looked at me and said, I'm ready to give up candy. And she was smiling, and she was happy. So for her, uh, taking 500 milligrams of tryptophan mid-afternoon and bedtime resolved her issues. She was able to sleep. She was able to get off the candy and the bread. Obviously, getting off the gluten and uh, boosting iron was very important as well, but her anxiety and her depression and her sleep and her anger issues all went away. Just three changes, iron, gluten, I should say four changes, iron, gluten, red meat, and then the tryptophan. So with low GABA symptoms, you're going to feel anxious, wired, worried, fearful, and stressed and overwhelmed, and it's all physical in the shoulders and the physical body. 
And as I said, people with low GABA will uh, eat sugar or drink wine to relax. So I've had someone rate themselves on these symptoms on a scale of 1 to 10. GABA calm is the, the, my first choice. It's a sublingual. It's actually made by Source Naturals. It's actually, this is a mistake, it has 125 milligrams of GABA, uh, 25 milligrams of tyrosine, and the dosing is first thing in the morning, mid-morning, and afternoon. Usually one is enough. Some people need two at each time. For some people, GABA 250 milligrams at night can help if they tense when they go to bed, one to two at bedtime. I find that 750 milligrams of GABA is too much. It's way too high for most people. So although I have had one gentleman um, who had responded really well to uh, uh, benzodiazepines and had a lot of pain issues, and he was able to take uh, larger doses of GABA. So it really depends on each individual. Yoga, Tai Chi, meditation, guided imagery, all of these raise GABA levels. And taurine is an amino acid that helps to make GABA. I don't use it very often, although it is very helpful if someone is an alcoholic, and it's very obviously very good for the liver. The starting dose is 500 milligrams for that. The inositol helps with, uh, is calming, and it also helps for the excessiveness. So if someone is not, uh, we're not eliminating their excessive tendencies, or if they've got full-blown um, OCD, um, and their tryptophan is not eliminating their symptoms, then I'll add in inositol. And the dosage is up to 18 grams a day. And that's not a typo, it is 18 grams a day. It comes in a powder form and it's pretty tasty. And I've had some really good results. Um, one of my uh, young boy of about, oh, I'm trying to think how old he is, 12. 12 year old boy with really bad OCD did really, really well on tryptophan and the inositol. And then theanine is an option. I mentioned I tried it, didn't really work with me. I've had a few clients who find that it helps them at night. And you have anxious pets as well. And I just wanted to share this, these two stories because they're such cute stories. Um, my sister had a cat who was very anxious and she always asked me uh, advice before she uses any medications and the vet had said, I've got this drug called Anxitane and it's really amazing for cats. So she called me up and said, did I think uh, sh she should put her cat on the Anxitane? And I said, well, let me look it up. And I looked it up, and lo and behold, the main and single only ingredient in Anxitane is L-theanine. So they have taken a wonderful amino acid, and they have packaged it into a drug-sounding name, and it's amazing for cats. Anyway, her cat got on the Anxitane and is no longer anxious. So it is amazing for anxious pets. I've also had good stories of tryptophan being used for very anxious horses as well. And uh, the little dog here is a, a dog of one of my clients, and when she went on a gluten-free diet, she put her dog on a gluten-free diet, and this very anxious, very nervous dog uh, got on the uh, gluten-free diet, and uh, his symptoms completely went away. So pretty amazing for that. So with GABA, there is not as much research, and I'm going to share with some share some of the research here with you. So there is research showing that GABA plays a role in anxiety. So we know that there's this connection here, and that when you've got low GABA, you're going to feel anxious and agitated, uh, stressed, um, and you may have poor sleep as well. And there is one an unpublished study using pharma GABA. Um, and this was with people who had a fear of crossing these uh, this high suspension bridge that went across this big canyon, and they found good results with it. I do not use farming ever. I have found better results just with regular GABA. But this is, uh, you know, a a form of GABA that some people seem to do okay with. And then, of course, I mentioned that yoga uh, raises GABA levels. So not much research on GABA, unfortunately. You'll also hear people say that GABA doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. And if, it do, if you're noticing symptoms, it's because you've got a leaky uh, blood-brain barrier. And that may be the case. Uh, but it different, people definitely do get results. So it is working. I have also seen that there is research showing that it's having an effect at the cellular level. So um, I don't think we know enough about the mechanism and how it's working, but it certainly does work for a lot of people. 
And this is a, an example that I wanted to show you of a woman who needed a very small amount of GABA. So she was in her late 20s. She had this uh, guy who was stalking her. She was very, very anxious and terrified of this guy who was stalking her. And we did a trial of GABA calm in the office. And she put the GABA calm in her mouth. You know, symptoms were like eights and nines and tens. She did the GABA calm. And I picked up my pen to write something. And before I even had a chance to write something, she said, I feel like I had a glass of wine. I feel totally relaxed. And she just, so I had her spit the GABA calm tablet out. So she needed a very small amount. And Carla Marie, who's the nutritionist, this was actually at Recovery Systems, Carla Marie called them these, uh, these uh, pixie dust clients. So they needed a very, very small amount. So make sure that your intake form says, are you overly sensitive to supplements or medications? And ask, ask the person, you know, does a small amount have a big effect? And if they are, you just need to be aware that you may need to start low or just watch out for something like this. When it comes to some of the other amino acids, if they are very sensitive, I'll have them open a 500 milligram capsule and just dab, you know, wet their finger and take a few dabs. Instead of a 500 milligrams, they'll do two dabs or three dabs or four dabs, and they can get results like that. I had one client who needed like two dabs of everything, and which was great. She, uh, you know, the course of working with me for three months, she needed one bottle of everything, which, you know, she got really good value for money in terms of her supplements. So some people are just very sensitive to, to them. And then this is another case study. This was, this is actually my story. I was in my late 30s. I was anxious. I had this pounding heart, this sense of doom. I had these three panic attacks, very stressed out. What my, my solution was gave a calm. I did two twice a day, and it significantly reduced my anxiety. But when I added in this GABA, additional GABA in the evening, it was actually GABA relaxer, which had some GABA and taurine in it. I think it had uh, glycine in it as well. Two at bedtime it totally eliminated my panic attacks. And it gave me immediate relief while I addressed the gluten and the soy and the low progesterone and the adrenal issues and the pyroluria. Low catecholamines will result in depression with apathy. So don't want to get out of bed, don't want to see anyone, no energy, often poor focus, low drive, low motivation, and then they'll use sugar or caffeine for energy. And the amino acid to raise the low catecholamine is tyrosine. The starting dose is 500 milligrams first thing in the morning and mid-morning. So it would be one, two, or three, first thing in the morning and then mid-morning. And then mid-afternoon as well, but not later than 3 p.m. And if someone has really bad sleep issues, we may not even do the mid-afternoon dose. And it really helps people get off the coffee, and it helps give them that energy when they're going for coffee or they're going for sugar for their, for their pickup. I tend to find that people don't need more than three. Most people get away with one. Uh, two or three times a day, or one uh, or two, uh, two or three times a day. Three is a lot for most people. Fish oil can be low. Uh, sorry, omega threes can be low, and fish oil can help, and it actually helps to raise the catecholamines as well. And low vitamin D plays a role in catecholamine production as well. And then of course we've got to take the thyroid and the adrenals because if someone's got a depression and low energy and they can't think, it could be the, the thyroid and the adrenals. And it could be all three. But the great thing is the tyrosine actually is a raw material for making some, you know, making thyroid hormones. So adding in the tyrosine can actually start to help if thyroid um, is a problem. So when it comes to testing, uh, we, I don't do any testing anymore. Um, when I was at Recovery Systems, we did some testing on occasion and we would test serotonin and the catecholamines and use platelet testing. So we did it when someone had very severe depression or anxiety uh, for children, if someone was pregnant or breastfeeding. And vitamin diagnostics is the lab that does the testing and it looks at the levels of the previous three months. So it's similar to HbA1c. And the results are very similar to cerebrospinal uh, fluid results. 
I am not a fan of urine testing, um, and Julia Ross wasn't a fan of it either. either. She's written a great article in the Townsend letter talking about urinary neurotransmitter testing. And I have seen a number of, uh, of results from people who've done the urine, uh, urinary neurotransmitter testing and then co correlated with what they've done or with the symptoms on the amino acid questionnaires, and it doesn't always correlate. So I, I am of the same thinking that uh, the urine testing is not as effective. The, um, the great thing is doing the questionnaires, having someone try the amino acids, seeing how they respond is enough in most cases to see if, you know, if, 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 it's, if the amino acids are needed. You don't need to do the testing. Now, what I haven't, what I'm not going to be talking about today, which I, which uh, is something that needs to be considered as well, is genetic mutations because that can definitely play a role in whether some of these things work or not. So, doing some testing in that area might be useful. So, let's go into low endorphins. When you've got low endorphins, you're going to cry or tear up easily. You're going to feel very emotional, very sensitive to emotional and physical pain, and you're going to love certain foods. So if someone says they love their ice cream or they love their chocolate chip cookies and they go for comfort eating or reward eating or a treat, then it's, you can think that it's a low endorphin. And then in the amino acid that raises the low endorphin is DPA, D-phenylalanine. And what it does is it actually destroys the enzyme it breaks down the endorphin. So in essence, it's raising your endorphin uh, levels. The starting dose is 500 milligrams, one to two first thing in the morning, mid-morning, and mid-afternoon. And I don't use uh, the DL phenylalanine, the DLPA. Some of that converts to um, tyrosine, and some of this helps to raise, sorry, some of that helps boosting catecholamine, so there's a little bit of tyrosine in there, and some of it helps to raise the endorphins. But I just find having people just do the DPA to raise the endorphins and just doing the tyrosine to raise the catecholamines seems to be more effective. It's just, and, and then they're just doing a few supplements rather than doing a whole, you know, doing more, more supplements than they need to do. Preform amino acid blend uh, together with the DPA is often helpful, especially if someone is not a big protein eater. And then if they are, we obviously want to be getting good protein at all the meals. If someone's got the low endorphins, we also want to think about whether casein or gluten intolerance um, is a problem. And then other things that raise the endorphins is exercising, giving, or donating of your time um, raises the endorphins, and then so does acupuncture. And this is the big clue if someone is low endorphin. They love chocolate chip cookies, or they love cereal, or they love chocolate. And what I'll do is I'll say to the way that I've tested this in the office is, what are, you know, how do you score? And they'll say, yes, I love chocolate chip cookies. And I'll say, if you could never, ever have them again, how would you feel? And they'll say, it's like a 10. I'm devastated. I love my, my chocolate chip cookies. And some people will actually get emotional and they may have like a little tear in their eye. And that's a clue that it's low endorphins. What I'll do is have them chew the DPA, 500 milligram capsule, and within five minutes they will look at me and say, I can't believe I felt so emotionally attached to that chocolate chip cookie or that ice cream or whatever it is. They can't believe that they felt so emotional about it when I said they wouldn't, wouldn't be able to have it anymore. And they feel like someone gave them a big hug. You get that sort of warm, comforted feeling. And that, that's when you know that the endorphins are working. And then the, the final area is low blood sugar. And someone with low blood sugar is obviously going to feel irritable or shaky. And it may look like anxiety. Some people have full-blown anxiety when their blood sugar dips too low. And the other big thing is you've got this intense cravings for sugar or starch to give to feed the brain, because the brain is starving. It needs that fuel. Glutamine is amazing for keeping blood sugar stable. So when I first start working with someone, when they're not eating frequently enough, or they're not making sure to get their mid-morning snack, and they've got the low blood sugar symptoms and the anxiety, I'll have them get on the glutamine. 500 milligrams, uh, one to three, first thing in the morning, mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and evening at night. Even at night can be helpful for some people. If they have this intense craving for something sweet, 
they can open it onto their tongue and it will completely take the sweet uh, desire away. Some of my clients say to me, well, why would I do that? Why would I open powder onto my tongue when I could go and have a piece of chocolate? And I say to them, well, just listen to your nutritionist and say I'm going to have the chocolate, but first I'll put the glutamine on my tongue and then I'll have the chocolate afterwards and I'll put the glutamine on their tongue. That craving will go away and they don't even feel like the chocolate afterwards. So it's just a matter of them getting used to the fact that it's going to actually help. Most of the time it converts to GABA, but it can convert to glutamic acid. So for some people doing the evening dose may be too much. Uh, obviously to help stabilize blood sugar, they've got to be eating a good breakfast, having some protein at breakfast, and having the three meals and healthy snacks like jerky and boiled eggs and nuts and seeds and fruit as their snacks. And then the other thing that can help with low blood sugar is adding additional chromium. And chromium has actually been shown to be calming as well. And I just want to say something before we finish here about the uh, sugar addiction or drug of choice. So people have different drug of, a different drug of, of choice to feel normal. And if they've got a neurotransmitter imbalance, they might crave sugar or carbs or tobacco or pot or caffeine, or they might have some kind of shopping behavior that's you know, out of control. And they will use a drug of choice to feel normal. And addressing the brain chemicals can eliminate this need to feel normal by using whatever their drug of choice is. It could be pot, which will improve their focus or be relaxing. They might eat chocolate to make them happy or as their reward. They might have sugar to give them energy. Or they may have caffeine to give them energy. So they will use this drug of choice. So for different people, the drug of choice can be different. And it can do different things. So for some people, some, you know, the chocolate can make them feel more happy. For someone else, the chocolate could give them more energy. So it's a matter of figuring out what their issue is, what their symptoms are, and what they're using to feel normal and using the amino acids to address that. And I wanted to end with this great quote by Abram Hopper, also molecular psychiatrist. Mental, physical and mental diseases are affected by what we put into our mouths or fail to take in as nourishment. And I'm ready for some questions. That's a great quote. <laughs> it is. We put a lot of things in our mouth. Some that we should and some that we shouldn't. So, and it affects different people in different ways. Uh, yeah. Um, terrific um, presentation, Trudy, and there are a lot of questions that I want to get to and I want to get started. Um, we've been talking about testing. So um, the questionnaires that you mentioned, um, can you uh, get us the questionnaires so that we can post them with the archive webinar to our website so that people have access to them? Sure. Great. Terrific. So everybody there that wants um, that we're asking for the questionnaires, um, we will post them in, and they will be up with our archived webinar. This will be posted in a few days to the Hawthorne website and um, you'll be able to review this presentation again um, and access uh, uh, the attachments for the questionnaires. Um, you talked about um, Dopa Makuna. Um, were you addressing it as far as um, with dopamine? So what is the question? What about using dopa macuna for, for dopamine? Yes, and that is, uh, is, has been shown to be effective, and I just haven't used it very much. But I have been hearing that people are using it, and it does, it will do the similar, it will have a similar, similar effect. And um, some people say that GABA supplements don't cross the blood-brain barrier seeing effects like this that are so immediate on on mental angst, what, what's your opinion of that? You know, they, it's, it's tricky because there's not enough research on it and there was one study saying that it didn't cross the blood-brain barrier and I know Dr. Karazian said that it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier and just, you know, that he is so adamant that it doesn't work that I know it's not in any of the Apex Energetic supplements. They use the analog, some of the, the raw materials that they say will make the body will make the GABA. So there's definitely controversy about it. 
it's definitely having an effect, whether it is whether the person who is being you know is being calmed by it has a leaky uh, blood brain barrier or whether it's working at a different level, I don't know. So I don't have an answer, I just know that it works. And as I said when I was when I was going through the GABA section, I did see some research recently saying that it uh, may be affecting uh, people at the cellular level, so it may not be getting into the brain at all. I, I don't have an answer. Um, uh, when there's physical pain that's fibromyalgia-like, um, um, is that associated more with low serotonin or low um, uh, DLP? The physical pain can actually be associated with three of the brain chemicals. So low serotonin, definitely, definitely low serotonin, um, and then also low GABA because GABA is very relaxing to the muscles, and then also the, the low endorphins because the endorphins help with pain control. So it can actually be all three. Okay. Um, this person's been taking 5-HTP uh, for a couple of years, um, says recognize I shouldn't take it so long term and I've been cutting back but I still have symptoms. Should I continue tapering or increase the dose? I hate to give advice, and I don't know the rest of the story, but... It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you have, it just have this, just this little snapshot. Yeah. Um, you know, if I was working with someone and they w we weren't getting resolution with that, I would look at some other causes, why serotonin levels are not being maintained, because typically you would be on the amino acid, and then you'd get to the point where you've got a, you've got a full bucket, so to speak, and you don't need more. What, 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 what's the hole in the bucket that's causing you know, the serotonin to keep getting depleted? Is it stress? Is it, uh, is it gluten intolerance and malabsorption issues? Is it if you don't have the cofactors like iron or B6 or zinc to help make, keep making the serotonin? Those are just some thoughts. Okay. And um, we'll repeat this here. Uh, the amino acids that are best for dealing with chronic fatigue? The tyrosine, I, w I would say that that's probably the best. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now you talked about testing, but here's a particular question: um, Do you ever do or did you do it when you were at um, uh, the clinic with Julia Ross? Do serum blood analysis of the amino acid profile of clients before and during the procedure? Um, does she determine the ratio of L-tryptophan to tyrosine in order to determine rate if serotonin synthesizes? Um, dopamine and norepinephrine synthesis can also be determined from tyrosine plasma levels. Um, do you ever use any of these analysis and see any correlation with how the individuals feel? I have not, so I can't answer that. And we didn't do that at recovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going primarily, um, you did some testing at the, um, at, at the clinic, but primarily you're going on symptom profile and using the questionnaires and, and how they respond to yeah. the work that you do. Yeah, for me it's 100% now, and when I was at the clinic it was 98%. We used the questionnaires and the response to the amino acids. If someone's sober, is taurine still beneficial? Or, and is taurine the best thing for alcohol addiction? Uh, it boils down to what I said earlier about the drug of choice and why you need it. So if you use alcohol to relax, taurine might be a good one because it helps to make GABA. Mm -hmm. But if you use if you use alcohol to make you feel happy, then maybe boosting serotonin would be a better option. Okay. Uh, taurine, the taurine is just nice when someone is going through the transition from drinking to non-drinking because it helps support the the liver as well. Excuse me a second. Um, for our, our, these amino acids, do you feel like they're safe for people that are dealing with conditions like diabetes, mus multiple sclerosis? 
I can tell you that there is actually some research showing that uh, glutamine, for example, is very, very beneficial for diabetes. And uh, I have not seen any issues with any of my diabetic clients with being on the aminos. It's actually effective because it helps with the sugar cravings. So it helps them get off, you know, reduce the sugar and, and improve their diets. So I, I would say it's perfectly fine with diabetes. I have not worked with anyone with MA, so I can't comment. Okay. Um, this person was looking right away for um, tyrosine from Lidkey. Um, do you use a different brand of tyrosine? Tyrosine, I'm not brand loyal. Any brand is fine. Any brand seems to be fine. Okay. Um, and um, as far as questionnaires, when you're doing the questionnaires, do you have anything that's designed specifically for children? I have a, pa a paraloria questionnaire for children, but not the amino acids for children now. Okay. Um, is it correct that you want to use 5-HTP if a person has adrenal fatigue and their cortisol is depleted in the morning and afternoon? And can tyrosine contribute to adrenal fatigue? So I got the first part, use 5-HTP when they've got low cortisol. I wouldn't say as a rule that you would use 5-HTP if someone's got low cortisol. It would be dependent on how they respond. So if they notice a symptom improvement with the 5-HTP, yes, then I would, I would say yes, that would be fine. And then the second part of the question, could you just repeat that, please? I just deleted it, Trudy. Uh, <laughs> I'm just moving on. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the next question. I'm sorry. No, that's OK. Um, uh, to, um, you were talking about working with clients that are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications. Um, you said you had a limit of one SSRI, but do you feel like it's safe to have them take amino acids? Uh, let me. When I first started working, uh, when I first became a nutritionist, I had a number of people come and see me who were on maybe one SSRI and maybe a bed that as a pen, and I did not feel comfortable working with them. I actually referred them to Julia's clinic before I even started working there. So. I feel comfortable doing it now because I've done it for so many years and I did it with the guidance of Julia and the other people in her clinic. Uh, if you, if someone is thinking of doing this and they feel concerned about it, then I would say work with someone who's knowledgeable until you feel comfortable with it. Because you've got to, you've got to, I have a serotonin syndrome questionnaire that I, that I give, uh, give my clients and I say you, you need to be aware of this. They need to be talking to their doctor, so their doctor knows that they're doing this. So, if you, you know, if, I would say use caution until you, you know, until you've got the experience. So I came back to this question. I found it um, about the 5-HTB for adrenal fatigue, for cortisol depleted. The other part of the question was, can tyrosine, tyrosine contribute to adrenal fatigue? I've not heard that. I, I don't, not that I know of, no. Me to me adrenal either. fatigue. I would say t tyrosine is going to support adrenal fatigue because the catecholamines are produced by the adrenals and the brain, so it's going to help It'll be, su support the adrenals. Okay, thank you. Do you prefer saliva testing or, or um, uh, uh, blood testing for... Um, Cortisol. Saliva testing. Mm -hmm. With um, blood testing, you really can only test an AM. Um, you can't do a PM because you have to do it fasting, and you want to test between 2 and 4 in the afternoon, and you wouldn't have anybody fast all day for, for that. So I would do saliva testing for that as well. Yeah, yeah, and I like to do the four collections, and I like that the cortisol also has an antigliadin uh, marker on there as well, and then it also has DHEA. So you get you're getting a lot with the saliva testing. Do you have any counterindications of using the amino acids if someone's um, on prednisone but they have cravings? 
Uh, there's no none, none that I know of that that you couldn't do them with prednisone. Mm -hmm. No precaution that I know of that you couldn't do it with prednisone. Yeah. You mentioned that serotonin is helpful for digestive issues. Um, did you mean that it can help with all or certain kinds of digestive issues? When someone has low serotonin, they'll often have bloating and gas and malabsorption issues and possibly constipation or diarrhea. And it's and you know, like when someone says, "I feel like feels like I've got butterflies in my stomach," but the serotonin sort of calms that down. It just just calms the digestive system down. Obviously, you've got to look at all the other factors like food intolerances and, and healing the gut with the glutamine and, uh, and possibly adding in enzymes or adding in foods that are going to help um, enzyme production. But it definitely does help to calm a, a stomach that is, that's distressed. Obviously, we've got to look at the adrenals as well because the adrenals play a big role in digestion too. All right. Terrific. This has been um, another wonderful presentation uh, packed with information. I hope that um, everybody learned a lot from this. Um, please know uh, again that this webinar will be, uh, is being recorded and will be archived and posted to the Hawthorne website within a couple of days. So you'll be able to access it and um, review it again, review the slides, and um, have access to the questionnaires. So thank you, Trudy. I'm going to um, really express appreciation for this and look forward to your uh, next presentation on pyloria um, coming up later in a couple months. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming to the webinar. Um, it's, uh, it, it's fun to learn together. It's a, it's a different format. And it's just when we get terrific presenters like Trudy, it's just it, it, it just flows. So, um, if you want more information about the courses and classes that I was talking about in news and announcements section, um, please visit our website. Also, um, don't hesitate to, to um, contact Kathy McDermott. She's our director of admissions. If you have any questions about our programs, and then I want to invite you to join us for our next webinar, which is Tuesday, March fourth, at four p.m. Pacific time, and we're having Jeffrey Moss back. And um, Jeffrey Moss is pre presenting part three and the conclusion of this mental health series. Um, Dr. Moss is the founder of Moss Nutrition. It's a company that sells to health professionals only. And to Dr. Moss is going to uh, discuss the Moss Nutrition Select line and help those of us that are new to Moss Nutrition learn about their products and this unique company. Um, the title of this presentation is Introducing Moss Nutrition Select, a Unique Approach to Professional Supplementation. So we'll be sure to let you know more details about this in the coming week, but um, it's, it, it, it's a really good follow to what uh, Trudy has presented and the ter first two presentations that Dr. Moss did on supplementation. So all the questions you have about supplement companies, bring them to this webinar, and we're going to learn a lot when Dr. Moss comes back with us. So this does um, conclude the webinar for today. Thank you again, Trudy. You are welcome. And thank you to James Bernardinelli for engineering and for everyone for sharing this educational experience with us. I always wish you the best of health and hope you'll join us for our next Holistic Health and Nutrition webinars. I want to remind you there's a survey to fill out after the webinar ends. That really helps us have your feedback and comments. So um, if you can take the time for that, a couple minutes, I'd appreciate it. And remember that um, 10 minutes uh, at, at um, 3.50 <laughs> Pacific time, we have the information announcements period before the webinar starts. And there's always good things to share about that. So until then, I wish you all the best. And take care until we're back for our next webinar on March 4th. Bye for now.